Hello, welcome back to my Scale Rise Studio tutorial. This is Eric. In this video, new screens are added based on the previous project. As you can see on the screen, whenever you touch the screen of the device, you can see that the new screen is transitioning from bottom to top. The screen is changing with a fade effect from bottom to top rather than just going to the next screen. It doesn't seem like it will be easy to write this in code. However, using the UI editor, you can add effects very easily with a few mouse clicks. That's awesome. Uh, so I will show you how to use image button, multi screens, and transition effect. Before we begin, we have some good news. Uh, finally, they changed the price plan. The existing personal version has been changed to the free version. So if it's not a service launched by the company, I guess you can make and test many things with this free version. I'm so happy with this. Uh, this is a Tesla website. Uh, click the arrow in the center bottom to go to the next page. I don't know why, but from the second page, uh, there is no error, so you have to scroll with your mouse to see the next one. In fact, mouse scrolling is more intuitive anyway. Uh, like this website, we're gonna update our existing project, including a total of four screens from Model 3 to Model X. I think we can get a good enough designed project at the end of this project. Let's see how it goes. This is a project I worked on before in Scaleline Studio. From the previous video, I believe you have the same project. The version of the Scaleline Studio currently in use is 1.0.2. Updates are frequent, so it's recommended to always keep the latest version. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to add an image button. The reason is to create a trigger that goes to the next page when a click event occurs on the background image. I'll remove the existing background image widget. Uh, let's name the image button as a background image button. I set the image to an existing Tesla Model 3.png file. Also set the width and height to 100%. I set it this way because the image I used in this project is the same as the screen size. In the wrapped hierarchy, move the background image button to the top. Uh, since the beginning of the rail starts from the top, what is at the top is shown at the bottom of the screen. I'm trying to move the background image button just below screen 1 by drag and drop, but it doesn't work. In this case, it may be faster to move other widgets. Uh, this way, you will see the same screen as before. Let's see how it actually works by clicking the play button. Uh, whenever you click the background image, you can see the image is not visible. This is because it uses an image depending on the button's event. Uh, go back to the background image button. Uh, you must select an image for each button state. Uh, initially, it's release the state. This part was added the first earlier. Uh, select the image again by changing it to the pressed state. Even when the button is in disabled state, uh, we will use the same image. I think I might be able to use it later. Let's test again. I'm clicking on the background image, but the broken screen is no longer visible. The reason why there is no change on the screen is because all states have the same image and no button click event is added. Now it's the time to prepare the next screen. If you click the duplicate icon of screen 1 in the left hierarchy, a new screen will be created with all the widgets it contains. Now let's name this new screen screen 2. Let's add an image to be used in screen 2. I have prepared the file to fit my device screen through the image gallery provided on the Tesla official website in advance. The second screen is model Y screen. Oh, let's check it again. All right. Uh, select the release, pressed, and disabled images of the background image button as the model Y image. Uh, also, change the title header to model Y. Uh, this completes the second screen. I was able to create a second screen very easily from the first screen. Uh, now what we need to is when a click event occurs on the background image button on the first screen, we need to move it to the second screen. If you click add event, a window for adding an action is displayed. Uh, first, let's name the event as to change. The trigger type is click and the type is change screen. Uh, when you press add button, uh, you can select the target screen and also the effect you want. The screen to move from screen 1 is the second one. Uh, fade mode is the move top. This can have the effect of the screen transition from bottom to top. Uh, without delay, we will set only the speed to 500 milliseconds. Uh, after setting this up, let's see how it works. Uh, if you click the background image, you can see that the second screen comes from bottom to top. Uh, very nice. Uh, the background image button on the second screen has not yet added the trigger event, so no action can be expected. 
Uh, now let's create the third screen. Creating is the same. You can duplicate it from the first screen and it doesn't matter if you duplicate it from the second screen. Uh, change the name to screen 3. Uh, next to model Y is model S. Alright, what we did for screen 2, we changed the button state image of the background image button to the model S image. Uh, also register the event of the background image button of screen 2. Start with add event. Uh, the name of the event is S3 change and the type is change screen. The target screen is screen 3 and the fade mode is move top. It's the same as the event you created in the first one. Uh, let's check if it works properly. Uh, click the background to go to the third screen. Uh, very good. Since the start of the simulation is selected screen, to test from the beginning, select the first screen and press the play button. It works very well. It moves from the first screen to the third screen without any problem at all. The title of the third screen is Model S, so I'll fix it. Uh, we will make the last screen, the fourth screen. It's the same, so go fast. In the fourth, we will return to the first screen again. This allows you to show the screen over and over again without end. Let's test if it works. Oh, the event for the third screen to the fourth screen is not registered. Uh, I will add this part. Uh, it's the same work, so let's move on quickly. Uh, this completed a total of four screens. Let's check the results again. As you can see, it works very well. I hope this effect can be expressed well on devices too. Uh, these are the screens we worked on today. Uh, very nice. Uh, now we need to export the output as a C file. Uh, select Export, Export File from the menu. Uh, create a folder called Tesla Multi Pages and select it. Uh, for your information, this can cause problems if the project name starts with a number. Uh, later, I change it to the project name and folder name with the number removed. Uh, this export is complete. The output file is a total of 8 files, uh, 4 source code, and 4 image files. All looks good. Let's go to the Arduino IDE. Uh, this is a code from the previous project. For reference, it's recommended not to touch the code created by the UI editor if possible. Anyway, today we will simply remove the existing UI files and replace them with the new UI files. Uh, you will see Arduino ID updated with the new files right away. Uh, as mentioned in the previous video, the path settings of LVGR must be set according to your environment. Uh, modify only the path of the LVGR in UI helpers and the UI header file. This completes the preparation of the code. Uh, there is one part that needs to be changed before building it. That is the partition scheme. Uh, because the size of the image files used here is large, a larger fresh memory is required. If you choose a huge app, you can upload without any problem. Uh, I will talk about the image size again in another project. Anyway, with this, you can build and upload it. Uh, here's what it looks like in action on the device. Today, I prepared two devices. On the right is an ESP32-based Lily Pi device, and on the left is an ESP32-S2-based MakerFab device. Since most devices have PSRAM, they use LVGR with double buffering. The difference is that Lily Pi's display is ST7789 and the MakerFab device is IRI9488. Uh, due to insufficient RAM of MCU, the large image size makes the delay to draw it. Uh, let's look at this part again through another project. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. See you on the next project.